Uh, yes, Jay, thanks very much. The answer to your question, which is a, a good one, is, is obviously yes, because if uh, all the uh, workers in London, the 10% of, of full-time uh, workers and 44% of part-time workers in London who earn less than the uh, London living wage uh, were paid uh, that wage, then there clearly would be a reduction in the in-work benefits uh, that they receive. And, and that is why I think you're on the right track. And that's why this body has so supported London citizens over the years in their campaign for a London living wage. And we want to see more. We've got 121 firms already, I think, in London that uh, have adopted it. That's obviously nothing like enough. Kit is uh, leading on that uh, now for us in City Hall, and we, uh, we want to increase as fast as we possibly can, uh, not just the, the corporations that are paying the living wage, but obviously to get uh, parts of the public sector that are currently not picking it up to do so as well. And uh, some London boroughs do, uh, most London boroughs at the moment don't, and uh, we want to see faster progress, not just, of course, in the boroughs, but across Whitehall as well. Um, it's to your credit that you kept up this concept of the London living wage, because it's always been true that the national minimum wage... Accelerated. Has, sorry? Has never, the national minimum wage has never been enough for people to live on in London. But now what's happening is that the London living wage and the national minimum wage, there's a gap opening up between them, and it means that, in effect, taxpayers are subsidising big businesses who won't pay the London living wage. Would you agree on that? I, I, I do agree with that, uh, effectively, uh, Jane. I do agree with that, and I think the, we, the answer is to expand the London living wage. And, you know, clearly at the moment there is, a, and there has been for the last... 10, 20 years, a widening gap in incomes in, in London. Uh, the cost of uh, wages have, have stagnated uh, over the last four or five years, uh, if, not been, if not depreciated in, in real terms. And people face huge pressure on their incomes. Uh, energy costs continue to, to rise. Uh, the London living wage actually represents a very sensible way forward, economically speaking. It is not that expensive for companies to uh, implement. Uh, I do think it represents a great campaign. And one of the things that we're now looking at, and um, Kit may want to ask a question about this, or somehow make these views one, one of the one of the things we're now we're now looking at. Uh, sorry, I know this is your question, Jenny. I don't want to invite, invite Kit into your time. But uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things we're now looking at is whether you could expand the London living wage faster by creating particular zones where it is agreed amongst all the companies there that they, uh, they will pay it. And uh, that might be one way of, of getting some, a bit of a tiger in the tank. You, uh, you've got a target at the moment of 250 companies by, is it 2015 or something? The, the problem is that will still leave a thousand big businesses in London, big companies, not paying it. And it seems to me that's I, actually not fair on the taxpayer. So do you think there's something you could do, apart from these zones, I mean, just to put pressure on... You know, through, the, through um, you know, all your yes, government I mean, contacts? What, what, I, I think what the, the challenge is, London citizens who started all this and who, uh, who I think have got the, the right idea have always fought shy of having a compulsory uh, approach. But that's and, not and, in your... Re you couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. We couldn't do that anyway. So we don't, we don't want to go down that route even if, even if we could. Um, but I, I do think that, that I, mean, I, you know, I would accept your criticism. I do think that the, the target of 250 is possibly uh, capable of uh, being improved and is, under, is unambit. We could, we could do better than that. Will you? And I, I would like to see um, a lot more political awareness of the benefits of, of, this, of this policy. It doesn't really uh, hurt corporations that much in their, in their bottom line. It does engender a great deal of loyalty in staff. It helps reduce uh, staff turnover. Uh, it increases productivity. Uh, I, think, I think companies in London should go for it, and I would, I would exhort them to do so. It, it, will you, in fact, then put up your target? Could you do something a little bit more proactive, make a more ambitious target? to join some more of these I, our, 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 target, our target is obviously 100%. I mean, that's what I, that's what I want to achieve. Right. Um, but it's, 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 it's not, you know, it's something that we, to 
to be fair to this administration, I think you know people people looking back at the the history of the the, the growth the growth curve of, of firms paying the London living wage it, it has gone up uh, faster under this melting you know make a, uh, than previously and that that shows the seriousness with which we take it. But if you're saying we could do better and we could go faster, then yes, I would agree with you, Jenny. Thank, Thank you, you. Assembly Member.